God bless you. You may be seated. This morning, I want to just uh, speak about something that I believe is quite important, and that is about judgment, justice. Uh, so many people today say there is no justice. Uh, we live in a, a very, very strange time. Uh, anyone that uh, denies that is either ignorant or blind. In the day of Jesus, they said that the Antichrist spirit was already there. But the Antichrist spirit is more dominant today than ever before. There is an anti-God um, system, an anti-God move here in United States, a country that sent missionaries all around the world to preach the gospel. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of churches around the country, thousands and thousands of young men and women raised up and sent forth to share the good news of Jesus Christ. And you would think that that would have had a tremendous impact upon our society, but today we can see hell is broken loose. Even this morning, there are those that are going to go to churches to disrupt because those churches don't agree with them. In fact, somebody said we are going to burn the Eucharist. Now, we don't believe the Eucharist like Roman Catholics do, but nonetheless, it's an assault against the kingdom of God. And we must understand the things that are taking place today has to do with the Lord Jesus Christ. We know that people don't have a problem with Buddha. They don't have a problem with any other God except the true God, the God of the Bible, the Lord Jesus Christ. And today we see a legal system that is totally confused. They let criminals go free. And if people don't agree with them, they are the ones that become criminals. And no wonder there are many people that feel there is no justice in our society. Right has become wrong and wrong has become right. Good has become bad and bad has become good. And this is the kind of environment that the children have to grow up in today. That some people even have the audacity to say that they are not your children. That they belong to the government. I want to tell you this morning, if you gave birth to a child, that child belongs to you and no one else. We as the church have to understand that we are in the very deep, in the vicious spiritual warfare. And that's why Wednesday night, last Wednesday night, we prayed for people to be filled with the Spirit. Because if you're not filled with the Spirit, you're not going to stand. You're not going to overcome. You're not going to experience victory. God wants us to make a stand. And there are people in the churches today that call, I'm born again. And crying and saying there's no justice. Well, I want to speak about a judgment today and about justice and about a judge. I'm going to read you a few scriptures first of all. Ecclesiastes 12, for God will judge us for everything we do, including every secret thing, whether good or bad. A day is fixed for his righteous judgment of the world. Acts 17, all sin is ultimately against the righteous God. God alone is the judge. God's laws and judgment are completely righteous. He exercises justice 
toward all humanity. He is just in all his ways. God rightly judges the heart, the mind, and the deeds of men and women. God, the psalmist says, come and judge the earth. Man's responsibility in all the ages is to believe and obey. That's our responsibility, to believe God's word and obey. And so those scriptures all speak about God is the righteous judge. And I want to show you the scope of his judgment. God has a track record of a faithful, righteous judge. We know today judges are moved by political movements. They are moved by political ideas and philosophies and not by righteousness. But you can be assured this morning that there is a judge of all humanity who is a righteous judge and he's the God of the Bible. Right in the very beginning, when the angels in heaven stood around the throne of God and praised Him and worshipped Him, it says there was one who was a covering cherub. Now there are different groups of angels. There are archangels, there are covering cherubs, and there are ordinary angels. Covering cherub is the highest or the second highest group of angels in heaven. And this angel's name was Lucifer. And right there in heaven, in the beginning, he said, I will ascend to the throne of God and I will be as God and I will be like him. Disobedience right in the very beginning. A third of the angels stood with him in his rebellion and immediately God the judge judged them and cast them out of heaven. In the beginning, God created man in his own image and likeness and prepared a beautiful garden for them and said they can enjoy everything that is in that garden but set from the fruit of the one tree. The day you eat of that tree, you shall surely die. Satan came along, deceived them, they ate of the fruit, disobeyed God, and immediately there was judgment. God drove them from the Garden of Eden and put angels with flaming swords at the gate so that they could not get back in. He said, if they eat that fruit, they will die. Put them out of the garden of evil and they became subject to death. You see, when God says something, he means it. We see also in the days of Noah, when God looked upon man and he saw that man's sin was so grievous that it repented the Lord that he had made man. And he looked upon the immorality and the violence and the corruption that was going on in the days of Noah. It says that God made a decision to judge them. But you know, God's grace always comes before his judgment. When he looked at that and he decided that he was going to judge mankind for their behavior, he raised up somebody who will give them hope. And that was a man by the name of Noah. Noah preached for 120 years without one convert. Unbelief, disobedience. They rejected the message of Noah. And then suddenly God's judgment came and the rains descended and and the earth broke open and water came forth and everything was drowned. God judged it. He said he would. And when men rebelled against him and disobeyed, he just judged it. The next thing we see in the Tower of Babel, when there was only one language, everybody spoke one language. And all of a sudden they were filled with pride. They said, let's build us a, a, a temple. Let's build us a, 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 a temple and so we can reach into heaven. And God was displeased with it. And immediately he brought down that temple. The first building ever built by man was destroyed by God because of rebellion and unbelief. And immediately he scattered them abroad and changed their languages that they could not understand one another. God 
is a righteous judge. When he says he will judge something, he will judge it. And the Bible says, as it was in the days of Noah, so will it be at the coming of the Son of Man. When God judged the people in the days of Noah, he will do the same judgment again. Because with the days are the same as it was in the days of Noah. Cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, filled with immorality. Same thing we see in our society today. We've even legalized that which is an abomination in the sight of God. And people are fighting for it. And there are people sitting in churches this morning that will fight for things that is an abomination against the living God. Right. Sodom and Gomorrah were immoral. God was going to judge them because he looked upon them. But Lot was living in that city. And Abraham prayed, and Abraham prayed, and Abraham prayed, and asked God if he will spare the one city just for the one person. And God said he will. And then he sent in angels to tell Lot to get out. His judgment was coming. And the Bible says all the men of that city gathered together. And they said, send out those two men that we may know them. Now you know that, no. Send out those two men that we may know them. Lot had been living in that city. He was so contaminated by the sin of that city that he offered his daughters to these men. And God's judgment came. Fire. And he burned down Sodom and Gomorrah. And God says he will judge, he will judge. Just step for step through the scriptures, you will see how God brings judgment. And then there was the ultimate judgment of God upon his only begotten son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Because Jesus became the sin bearer. Died on Calvary under the judgment of God because sin had to be judged. There on the cross, he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? God could not look upon his son because of the sin. But God's judgment fell that so, so that sin could be judged. Jesus died so that we can live. He who knew no sin became sin for us so that we may become the righteousness of God in him. And so you see, step for step, God pours out his judgment. The church, today's church, is going to be judged. Jesus is coming back again. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And he's promised his church that he will come back. He said, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I'll go and prepare a place for you. If I prepare a place for you, I will come again to receive you unto myself, so that where I am, there may ye be also. One of these days, there's going to be a shout, the voice of the archangel, the trumpet of God is going to sound and the dead in Christ are going to be resurrected and those which are alive are going to be changed and together they're going to be caught up in the air to be with the Lord. What happens then? The judgment seat of Christ. Every one of us is going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Not to be condemned, but to be rewarded for what we've done here on earth in these bodies. Every single one of us will stand before the righteous judge at the judgment seat of Christ. He judges everybody, every single human being, every group of people. So the church will be judged to receive rewards. The Jews are going to be judged. Why are they going to be judged? Because they rejected him when he came. It says in the book of Revelation, when Jesus comes back, they will see the nail scars in his hands and their feet. And they say, where did you get that? He'll say, I received it in the house of my friends. You see, he came unto his own, the Jews, and they received him not. They the ones that have shouted, let Barabbas go, let Barabbas go. Crucify him. An innocent man. 
the Jews sent to the cross, they will be judged. When? When we're in heaven receiving our rewards. There's going to be seven years of tribulation upon the face of the earth. The latter part of those seven and a half years is going to be tribulation like it's never, ever been seen before. It's called the Great Tribulation. And at the Great Tribulation, what is really happening is the Jews are being judged for the way they treated Jesus. A man is going to rise up. He's going to be the Antichrist and the world is going to bow to him and he's going to be worshipped everywhere. A man who's going to have all the solutions to the problems and the issues we are facing today. He's called the Antichrist because he's anti-Jesus. The world is aiming already for one world government. One monetary system. And one church. That's the way it's going. And you can see a lot of that taking place already. Why? It's all being prepared for the Antichrist. The devil is an imitator. And he imitates the triune God. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So he's going to raise up a Antichrist. And he's going to raise up a false prophet. He himself is called the dragon. So you have the dragon, you have the false prophet, and you have the antichrist. There's the evil trinity. The antichrist is going to make a pact with the Jews. And first of all, they're going to worship him and think he's a wonderful man. And he will stand up in their temple and he will say, I am God. And then he's going to turn against them. And it's going to be suffering to them like never before. It's God's judgment on the Jews. So God will judge his church. He will judge the Jews. He will also judge the Gentile nations of the world. The Gentile nations are all the nations who are not Jews. Consisting of every other nationality, that's the Gentile nation. So he judges the Jews, he judges the churches, the church, and he will judge the Gentile nations. The Gentile nations are going to be judged according to their behavior under the Antichrist when the Jews were persecuted and suffering according to how much they were willing to help the Jewish people. They will be judged. That's why Jesus says, I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me to drink. I was naked and you clothed me. It's got nothing to do with the poor. It's got to do with the Jews. Suffering under the wicked hand of the Antichrist. And there are going to be people in the nations of the world that are going to be compassionate towards those people and they're going to help them during that time of great suffering. And Jesus is going to say to those, he's going to separate the sheep from the goats. And to those, he's going to say, you can empty in to my kingdom. They're not saved, but they will enter into the kingdom of the thousand years when he rules and reigns from Jerusalem. And in that time, they will have an opportunity to turn to him and to surrender their lives to him. They will be judged. Everlasting punishment. The Antichrist, the false prophet, and Satan himself are going to be judged. The false prophet is going to be the forerunner for the Antichrist. He's going to perform many miracles like Elijah in the Old Testament called fire from heaven. But, but this uh, false prophet that goes before the Antichrist is going to perform lots of miracles. And if you don't understand God's word and if you don't understand that there are false prophets and false teachers today, you are going to be deceived. That's why we never run after miracles. 
In fact, the teaching of Scripture is that because you're a child of God, miracles run after you. Miracles will follow you. Signs and wonders will follow you. You don't follow them. But there are people in the kingdom this morning where always want to run around and look for miracles. They'll be easily deceived by this false prophet who will perform mighty miracles so that he can point people to the Antichrist. During the thousand years when Jesus reigns on earth and his peace and he's judged the church and we've received our rewards, if you suffered with him, you'll also reign with him. He's going to reign for a thousand years from Jerusalem. He is the Prince of Peace. For the first time, there will be peace on all, in all the earth. Because he will rule with the rod of iron. During those thousand years, he's going to bind Satan. Lock him up. For a thousand years. Can you imagine this morning a thousand years with Jesus ruling and reigning and there's no devil to deceive us? After a thousand years, he's going to let him loose. And then Satan once again gets a big army and gets people to turn against God. It's the battle of Gog and Magog. And then God's going to destroy them with fire. That before the thousand years, he takes the false prophet and the Antichrist and he casts them into the lake of fire. After the battle of Gog and Magog, he takes Satan and hell and casts Satan and hell into the lake of fire. That's their final destination. The judgment for wickedness. Hell and the lake of fire was not prepared for people. It was prepared for Lucifer, who in the beginning turned and ascended to the throne and wanted to be God and take the place of God. That God cast him out. That place was prepared for him and all those who would follow him. Hell, the dragon, Satan, false prophet, the Antichrist, all cast into the lake of fire. It's one more judgment. It's a group of people that we have not mentioned in all these judgments. And as those that have rejected Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. It is called the great white throne judgment of Almighty God. That all people of all times have had an opportunity to receive the gospel and to surrender their lives to Christ, but rejected it, disobeyed. Stand before him as the great judge. And he will not go by what other people have to say about them. He says you will open the book. The book of life. And if their names are not written in the book of life, they will also be cast into the lake of fire. So every group of people from the time when Lucifer rebelled in heaven until the last will stand before God. We who are born again at the judgment seat of Christ, we need not fear because the Bible says there is no more condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. Amen. We're going to receive rewards for all the things we've done and be blessed. You see, if God doesn't deal with sin, he cannot be called a righteous God. Righteousness must deal with sin, which is unrighteousness. So when you and I look around today and people do things and we think they're getting away with it and there are a lot of people getting away with a lot of bad things, but nobody gets away with it. 
Nobody gets away with it. There's a scripture in Ecclesiastes which says this. It says, because the judgment of God is not executed speedily, quickly, the heart of man is set to do evil continually. But judgment is coming. I know it's not a one a, a, a subject that causes us to leap out of our seats. But it's something we need to hear. Because sometimes we are broken, we are bitter. Because we find that things have happened in our family or, or somewhere and there's never been justice. And people cry for justice and there's no justice and they weep and they complain and they never, never uh, uh, live a proper life because they're so hurt because they believe there is no justice. Yes, there's justice. God is a just God. Amen. No one gets away with anything. He's not like the judges today that let the innocent go and let the, let the, the guilty go and put the innocent in prison. He knows everything about everybody. And to me, this is not a difficult thing because it sets peace in my heart to know that I don't have to get bitter with people. I don't have to get broken and upset with leaders who are wicked and think that somehow they're doing these uh, terrible things and they're going to get away with it. They're not. Appointed unto man once to die, and after that, the judgment. And so, you and I have a great, great opportunity to surrender our lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. We're not speaking about being religious, we're not speaking about bending the knee to rules and regulations. We're speaking about surrendering your life to the giver of life, the Lord Jesus Christ. God has a wonderful plan for each and every one of us. He's not a respecter of persons. God is not looking for only for the rich and the educated. He loves all people, all races, all colors. No matter whether they're rich or poor, Educated or uneducated, he died for them so that they may have life and that more abundantly. Jesus died so we might live. All he requires is that we say, Lord, here's my life. Obey him. Believe in him. And you will escape the great white throne judgment. In fact, God is so gracious that he will reward us for being obedient to his word. This is a serious matter. This is not a thing that we just do in church for the sake of doing it. This is life and death. Amen. If you believe, you will live. If you reject, you will die. Eye has not seen, nor ear heard of the wonderful things that God has prepared for them that love him. And I believe there are some of you here this morning. You're sitting on a fence. You think to make a decision like that is for sissies. May I remind you, the greatest and the strongest men of all time have been men of God. It's a sissy that cowards and flees from the gospel. But it's a man and a woman with backbone that will surrender their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't want to stand before God one day and God said to me, you know, you preached about everything 
but what was important. I want to give everybody an opportunity. I will never force anybody and I will never hold anything against anybody that rejects the gospel. But I pray for you. And I pray this morning that the blindfolds will be removed. The light of the gospel of Jesus Christ may shine in that today you will make the greatest decision of your life. May some of you who call yourself Christians, you're also sitting on a fence. You're half baked. You're neither in nor out. You've got to make up your mind who side you on. Don't say someday I'm going to draw closer. No, today is the day. Someday I'll give my life to Jesus. No, today is the day of salvation. The church needs to be the salt of the earth. We cannot afford to be half-baked in what we believe. We need to be sold out for Jesus. In our workplace, in our homes, in the sports, wherever we go, we need to make a stand as born-again believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to ask you just to stand for a moment. Maybe you came here this morning expecting to hear a message on Mother's Day about mother. God bless all the mothers. But this is about Jesus. Amen. And I want to challenge you today. I don't want to embarrass you. I want to give you an opportunity today to raise your hand and say, yes, I'm not saying get religious. I'm not saying join this church. I'm just saying all you have to do is say, Lord Jesus, I confess that I'm a sinner. And I ask you to forgive me to be my Lord and my Savior. And a miracle will take place in your life today if you will do that. Will you bow your heads for a moment, Father? If you're standing in and you in that condition, I want you to pray with me. God, I ask you today to forgive me of all my sin, to become my Lord and my Savior. Today, I surrender my life to you. I want you to take control. I want you to lead me and guide me. I want this eternal life. I want the forgiveness of sin. And so, Lord Jesus, right now, I surrender my life to you. It's a gift. When someone gives you a gift, what do you say? Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. If you prayed that prayer this morning, you need to say, thank you, Jesus, right now. Because he's forgiven you. You've become a child of his right now. Is there someone that prayed that prayer? Just raise your hand. Eyes are closed. Heads are bowed. Is there someone that prayed? Just raise your hands. We can see if you prayed that today. Yes, thank you. Is there someone else? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Is there someone else this morning who prayed that prayer? And say, yes, I prayed that prayer. I ask the Lord to forgive me today. Don't be shy. Just raise it. Nobody's looking at you. Is there someone? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There's someone else this morning. Quickly. I don't want to leave you out. You don't. Thank you. Thank you. I saw that. Thank you. I saw that. Thank you. Lots of people. Thank you. Thank you. I see your hands. Thank you this morning. Just by praying that prayer, I believe God is going to change your life. You know, that's what I did so many years and He changed my life around. Maybe you don't want to raise your hand, but you did pray that prayer. Let me tell you right now, God has forgiven you of sin and you're a child of His. For those of you that are Christians, I want you to make a commitment today and say, listen, I'm going to stop giving God the leftovers, the leftovers of my time, the leftovers of my money, the leftovers of my talent. I'm going to give Him the first fruits. I'm going to give Him the very best from this moment. Holy Spirit, I need you to help me to do that. I find it difficult, but I know with your help, I'll be able to do it. And today I commit myself to you and I commit myself to the gospel of Jesus Christ. In his name I pray and I thank you, Lord. Amen.